Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Marilyn Shannon and this is the Breaking Free Show and I am so happy to have you here on this special day. We're having a total eclipse of the sun today, which is a really interesting thing. We might get into that kind of conversation because it's uh, the first time in what, 99 years and here we are. So anyway, it's a happy day to have you here. And I want to say hi to Amnon before we get started. Hello, Marilyn. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. I put a picture of Amnon on the Facebook today for the first time. I oh, think, no, ever. you didn't. I think, I, I think so. Anyway, thank goodness for Amnon producing all these shows. It's great. So anyway, you know, I love, I love this world. And I love, 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 love having my guests on and sharing all different perspectives ideas, strategies, tools, personal stories, all kinds of things. Last week we had somebody in a tree. I mean, you never almost know what you're going to get here because the sky is the limit. So I just want to let you know you are more than welcome to partake in our chat. You can come in there anytime you like. You just put your name. You can comment, ask questions, all kinds of stuff. You can call into the show anytime you want at 919-518-9773 or you can come in on Skype at Computers 2K Voice. So several months ago, I was in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I went into a bookstore because I was looking to promote my book and wanted to see what the opportunities were. And I noticed these two people off to the side kind of having a nice little chat, and they were both wearing bandanas. And so it just got real curious, and they were talking about President Trump, which I was really curious about. And I started to eavesdrop. And I said, you know what? I want to talk to them too. So I kind of excused myself and said, do you mind if I talk to you? Anyway, this beautiful woman was sitting there, Tish. And she is my guest today. And I am so excited because, you know, it, it's, it's really, it's amazing what we allow ourselves to do when we open up to other people and we create this connection. And you know, people that know me will, and you've heard me mention this on the show before, there are these invisible lines of connection that are between all of us. And when we listen to them, we wake them up. And we listen for what's on these connections. And it's amazing, 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 amazing what you will find when you listen to these invisible lines of connection. And we all have them, and we can feel them. And they are extraordinary, powerful, and a gift from the universe. So before I say too much, because I've said a lot already, I want to introduce Tish. Tish, welcome to our show. Hi, Marilyn. Thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure. And thank you so much for opening up with me and just playing with me. <laughs> of course. It's fun to be here. Huh? It's fun to be here. Well, it's fun to have you. So... You know, Tish, we have, you know, when I started talking to Tish, I realized she had five children and she did all these interesting things. And I'm like, oh, my God. And she started telling me how old her children are. And I said, oh, I'm doing a book about millennials. And she has four of her children, basically, that fit into the, the millennial book. And so all four of her children are going to be in my millennial book. So I'm, I'm so excited about everything. So Thanks. tell everybody what you currently do. Um, currently, I'm self-employed. I own a company called Lotus and Lentils, and it is my pleasure to cook for families and cater for different events. And um, I also teach yoga, but primarily I cook, and I'm very passionate about veganism, so everything I make is vegan. And, of course, gluten-free. Yes. Right? So we want of, If someone doesn't have a gluten intolerance and they want something with gluten, then I can accommodate that, but... Um, by default, everything is gluten-free, yes. So let's, um, let's see, should we start backwards and go forward, or should we start forward and go backward into your life? Um, I guess chronologically makes the most sense. Okay, so, so where did you grow up? I grew up in Cary, North Carolina, so I've been in North Carolina most of my life. And Go ahead. What do, you, what do you want to know? So you grew up in a family, right? You had, like, tell us about your history. So I grew up in, um, well, it was a small town then. It's not so much a small town now, but um, 
I grew up with one brother who has Down syndrome, and um, I had two parents until I left home, so they, they stayed together the whole time, and my mom is or was bipolar, and my dad was alcoholic, and yeah, <laughs> so it was, it was quite a mix of our family, and um, it was challenging, and um, it, I guess you could say that it started me on the path of, I, I think that every experience that you have in life teaches you something and also prepares you for what might come in the future. So now looking back on all of that, I see its purpose, but it was, it was tough going through it at the time. So, so I, left, go ahead. I left home at 14 and, um, yeah, I just got tired of all of this stuff going on at home and it, it wasn't getting any better. So I left and, um, have been on my own ever since I was homeless for a while while I was trying to figure everything out. And that was an incredible experience. Slept outside, walked a lot, um, didn't have much to eat at all, but I never stole anything. <laughs> and um, yeah, so then I kind of hooked up with a family who kind of took me in and ended up meeting my first husband and had three kids with him. And he left me when I was pregnant with the third and said that, well, basically he, he left me to chase after a 16 year old. So anyway, it is what it is, but, um, you learn everything as you go along. But in any case, I was a single mom for a while and for quite a while raising those three. How old were you when, by the time you had the three? Uh, I was either 20 or 21 when I had my third. Okay. Yeah. And so I was a single mom for quite a while with those three. And then I met a guy who was 12 years my senior who seemed to have his life all together. And I was with him for four years. I don't have any children by him, but um, that turned out to be a really abusive relationship. So um, I finally worked up the courage to leave him. And so I left him with those three children who were at the time, uh, let's see, they were five, six, and two, I think, when I left him and um, went to a battered women's shelter and stayed there for a while until I got on my feet and found a job and continued to work and try to rear these kids. And um, then I met someone at the restaurant I was working at who, again, I thought <laughs> seemed to have everything all together. You know, you just never know. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so he had a degree in elementary education. And um, w long story short, we ended up getting married. And I have two children by him. So I have a total of five children. And I was with that guy for... I, I think 11, 12 years, something like that. We were married. Um, I was in the restaurant management business for a long time. And so I eventually moved to Wilmington, North Carolina. That's how I got from Cary to Wilmington um, to open a restaurant. And that was in 2005. So we've been here since 2005. And in 2008, my husband of however many years, 10 or 11 years, um, sexually violated my 12 year old daughter who he had raised since she was two. So that was the only dad she ever knew. And so basically I went from a two parent, two income household to being a single mom of five kids at night. Yeah. Pretty much rocked my world. <laughs> um, I'll try to get through that without crying, but if anyway. you, might, you might, but I may not. <laughs> Cause this is yeah. one of the things this is one of those things, one of the stories that Tish has shared with me that I have sh told other people because I admire her so much. Thank you. I appreciate she it. Go ahead. I'll let you go ahead. You talk, and then whatever you don't know about yourself, I'll fill in. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, anyway, so, um, yeah, so that happened in 2008. So I became a single mom of five kids overnight. My two oldest boys were in high school. My daughter who was violated was, she had actually just turned 13. So she was 
a month after her 13th birthday that happened. And my two youngest, who were the biological children of this guy, um, were in elementary school. I can't, I think they were like five and six, maybe, six and seven, something like that. They were really young. Um, she was 13, I was eight. Oh, Michaela says she was eight. <laughs> She's correcting me. So, um, yeah, it was definitely one of the hardest things I've ever been through. But looking back on it now, I can see how other things in my past helped to prepare me for what I was having to deal with then. Like my parents died when I was in my early 20s, both of them of cancer. They died one year and a couple months apart. My dad died of, on Christmas Day. So yeah, I didn't even have a support system. I didn't have family. I didn't have really anything except for my church family to lean on. So um, yeah, it was really, really, really challenging. But like I say, Marilyn, everything that you experience in life, I think, has something to teach you, even if it's really, really miserable at the time. And it helps to prepare you for something that you might not know that you're going to go through in the future. So, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I have no parents. I have five kids. I have three wonderful grandchildren. Um, yeah, life is good. <laughs> so so uh, before we go on, what happened with your brother? He still lives in Raleigh. He works and he lives in, um, I don't know the right term for it, but he has a roommate who's also disabled and they have um, a team that kind of oversee okay. their life activities. But yeah, he just had his birthday in May and we went up to Raleigh to see him and that was really good. So, How old yeah. is he? He's three years younger than me, so okay. he's 40. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really cool. So yeah. one of the things that I want everyone to know was, you know, I I have certainly met a lot of people in my day, and I have interviewed a lot of people, and I've heard all kinds of stories. And one of the things that has always, that struck me about Tish was when she told me about her daughter, she said that, and it's, I mean, she's spoken about this, so she said that her daughter had reached out to one of your sons, right? Mm -hmm. And had told yeah. him, and then mm -hmm. they told you. Mm -hmm. And all they had to do, guess what, was tell her one time. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Yeah. One time, and this man was kicked to the curb. Yes, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. That's right? And, and that yeah. is like a big, big... Michaela, you listening to this? Yeah. Yeah. Michaela, come out. Come over. Come okay. say hi to everybody. So Michaela is your... Second youngest? Thir uh, yeah. yeah. My youngest daughter, she'll be 17 in about a week. Michaela, yeah. come and say hi, honey. Mm -hmm. I'll see this here. Yeah, I can't move. That's no, all right. Just put, just bring your head over. It's, it's all right. Just kind of bend in. There you go. All right. So there's Michaela. She's adorable. So I, I, I you know, we chatted a little bit. Michaela's going to be in my book. And she, she I mean, she couldn't. If, if, if I didn't know any better, I would look at Michaela and say she wanted to get back into her mommy's womb. That's how much she loves this woman. <laughs> right? Well, that's very kind of you, but I'm sure there are times that she doesn't Quite feel the opposite. Yeah. yeah. We had an incident the other day that if you had seen, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't think that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's mothers and daughters. What can I say? I've got a couple. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I, Michaela, I, know, I, know, it, I hear a lot of women and, you know, um, women that have been sexually abused. And yeah. one of the things that I've heard a theme, not everybody, certainly, but a theme is that nobody believed them. Mm. Yeah. And one of the things that struck me, I knew who your mom, your mom was, the, I mean, when I met her, but when she told me the story and she, one time, and that's all it took, there was no doubt in her mind and, and, and Here's a man that she highly regarded and, you know, been married to for years. And she had no qualms, no get, no, no second thoughts. Amazing. This is yeah. a woman definitely to look up to. Yeah, Tish. Thank you, Marilyn. I mean, it just seemed, it seemed very instinctual for me that, you know, a mother's instinct is to protect her children and anything that happens, they scrape their knee, whatever, or somebody's pick them on, picking on them at school. It's just seems instinctual to defend them. It wasn't until 
the state came in and did the investigation, which they do automatically, which is good. Um, and they were asking me about the history. And when they found out that it had only happened the one time and that I stood by my daughter and kicked him out immediately and told him don't come back, they said that they were really amazed because most parents in my position do not stand up for the child. They actually side with the offender, which I, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't. I mean, I know that there are situations, I'm sure that there are situations where the child maybe, you know, who knows what they have going on. Maybe they're seeking attention, but I had no doubt in my mind that my daughter was telling the truth and, and that was it. That was a done deal. My marriage was over just like that. So. Yeah. And so this is your dad, right? Yeah, that's her dad. Do you, mm -hmm. do you see your dad? Do you? Um, no, no. I haven't seen him since I was like, yeah. Nine and ten. Yeah. He's currently sitting in jail because yeah, he because he can't pay child support. He doesn't pay child support. He, so he's in jail. He doesn't want to. Currently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so so you have a phenomenal attitude on life. Me? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. I, uh, mean, I mean go ahead. Yeah, I mean thank you, Marilyn. I appreciate that compliment, but it I don't know. It's just what what are you gonna do? You can't there have definitely been days where I felt like if one more thing was put on my shoulders that I was going to sink, you know, but what, what do you do? You, you just got to keep going. You cannot give up. You can never give up. I don't know. <laughs> so what did you, so what did you do? You put one foot in front of the other. Where did you get yeah. your inspiration or what'd you tell yourself? Um, well, my kids obviously were my inspiration because they depend on me and, and I was never going to let them down. Um, I started working overtime to try to pay the bills. Um, I, I, we had just bought a house when this happened. So we had just recently moved into the house that we had bought and I tried the best I could to pay the mortgage, but obviously we qualified for the house with two incomes, not one. And so even with my overtime, I was working like 80, 90, even sometimes 100 hours a week to try to pay the bills. And it was a very physically demanding job. I was actually working at a power plant where I was the only female. And so that's a whole nother story. But that was a real interesting life experience, too. But um, it, it didn't work. I couldn't pay all the bills. So my house got foreclosed on. And um, I even wrote to, at the time, Obama was the president. And I wrote to him and pleaded, please. Can you not let me lose my house? But I don't know, it, it, whoever got the letter, it didn't work out. So it was obviously meant to be that I was to lose the house. But anyway, so yeah, ruined my credit. Um, and then let's see, when did I start the, so I worked full time and overtime, doing the best I could to pay all the bills. I don't know, for lots of years. That happened in 2008. So um, I, I was working for the county at the time and continued to work for them. and. Um, the kids, once they got old enough, got part-time jobs and did the best they could to, you know, get whatever little bit of stuff they could get with their own money, which is really commendable and I appreciate. It wasn't their job to do that. And then, let's see, I think it was, let's see, today, this is 2017, a uh, few years ago, maybe 2015. Um, I have been practicing. I'm trying to remember when I started yoga teacher training. I'm, I'm getting to a point. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so I, I've been practicing yoga and running for, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years. And 2010, I think it was, um, I got invited to participate in a yoga teacher training program, which is where you go get your 200 hour certification to become a yoga teacher, which I, I didn't have any inclination that I wanted to teach. I just wanted to deepen my practice. And for some reason, I really, really hesitated on that decision. Like for months, I would think about it and pray about it and meditate on it. And it was really, I don't know what that was about, but it was a really hard choice. Um, I ended up doing it. And um, again, didn't want to be a teacher, didn't want to be a yoga teacher, um, but a couple months into the training, it was a 10-month program, I got offered a couple of gigs to teach yoga, and I was like, what the heck, I'm, I don't want to teach, <laughs> but I did, I felt like God was telling me that I was meant to do that, and so I did, but anyway, during that yoga teacher training program, um, we would have like potlucks, and I would start bringing some of my food, and all of the part of our kulas, what you call your yoga family, they were like, oh my gosh, do you cook for people? And I'm like, well, no, not really, just my kids. 
And they said, well, you should. And so I started cooking for some of them and started cooking for other people and it just continued to grow. So how that plays into it is I think that the yoga teacher training was pivotal to me discovering that, oh, perhaps maybe I'm not supposed to meant, not supposed to work at this power plant for the rest of my life. Maybe there's a bigger purpose. I was already vegan at the time. I've been vegan since pretty much 2007. Um, we went back to not being vegan after I became single mom and all that for a bit. But then I went back to being vegan. We've been vegan for a long time. Within like so. two years, you went yeah. back to being vegan. Yeah. So we've been vegan a long time. And everything I make is vegan. And so I just started kind of cooking for people on the side. And people started paying me, which was great because I was working full time and raising these kids. And so it was great to have the supplemental income. And through that journey, um, I'm a Christian. So I pray a lot and meditate a lot. And I just felt like there was a nudge that maybe this was, this was really what my calling was. It seemed really crazy to think, really far-fetched to think that I would quit my government job and leave my steady paycheck. But um, I prayed and meditated on it for a year and developed kind of my business plan. And in April of this year, I quit my job and now I work for myself full time. So <laughs> kind of crazy, but yeah. But I'm, I mean, I'm doing what I love. So I'm so passionate about I love cooking and I love sharing good food and I actually pray over everybody's meal. So I bring a lot of, I, I love it. I, it gives me a lot of joy and I get to share veganism. So yeah. So you do, and you do it full time. Yes. Wow. So yeah. I want to ask, I want to ask you about, so like, um, God, there's so many things I could ask you. I want to jump around a little bit. I, I want to ask you about your, about how, you, how'd you keep yourself going while as a child in that environment? Like, what did you do? Um, I ran away a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, once I figured out that, I mean, my mom would leave my dad and go back and leave him and go back and leave him and go back. And I remember, you know, when you're really young, you don't understand what's going on too much. But I remember some instances, like one time, she must have left him in the middle of the night and didn't take any clothes or anything for me and my brother. So the next day I had to go on a field trip to Pullen Park in Raleigh, which I'm sure you're familiar with. But um, back then Pullen Park was not paved. It was all gravel. And I remember going on this field trip with no shoes and the counselor having to carry me because my mom had left my dad the night before. I don't know. It's just funny stuff that you remember. But um, so, I don't know. So I she left stuff. when she would leave, she would take you with her? Yes. And then she'd go back because she was in, she was bipolar and it was a codependent relationship. So, and she hadn't worked in however many years. And so she couldn't, you know, no, no, I'm not blaming her at all, but she did not have the courage to think that she could do it on her own. She was afraid. And so she'd leave him and go back and leave him and go back. And I remember her, we were staying at a battered women's shelter in Raleigh at some point, me and her and my brother and she had run out of money and she was like, well, we're going to have to go back to your dad. And I said, please, mom, can we not go back? Can we not go back? And she said, well, I said, we can go to the Red Cross shelter, the homeless shelter, and let's stay there. And she said, no, I'm not taking you there. There's drugs there. And I don't know, I must have been like 12 or 13 at the time. And I remember saying, well, mom, there's drugs at school. <laughs> you know, what the heck? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, you know, I ran away a lot. But again, Cary was a small town at the time, so um, the cops actually got to know me pretty well, and they would just pick me up and take me back home. It was wow. it was nuts, yeah. And so, and how did you how what did you use to know how to parent? I mean, what sense you know, did you use? Great question. That is an excellent question because obviously I did not have it modeled. Um, I've asked myself that question, you know, not that I'm a perfect mom, I'm not a perfect mom by any means, but I definitely think I parent differently than the way I was raised. And yeah. the only thing that I can, the only thing that I can attribute it to is that God has had his hand on me there. I can, Marilyn, I can tell you so many stories of where I nearly died. I mean, like crazy stuff that there's no way God has not had his hand on me throughout my whole life. 
I mean, it's just nuts. <laughs> you, you, some of the stories, but probably we don't need to air, but I've been close to death a few times. Like, well, I almost died with Rocky, my first kid when I had him. That's why his name is Rocky. Um, but yeah, I'd say it's God. He's just, he's instilled in me, I don't know, a gift of a blessing of loving my kids and wanting for them to have a different life than what I had, I guess. Um, Tish, honey, do you think what you have is only inside of you or do you think we all have that? Oh no, we all have it. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely all have it. We're all created to love That's, that's all of us share that same destiny to love, to share love, to be loved. Yeah. Because sometimes I, I'll often say to people, listen, and somebody says, well, Marilyn, you can do that. I said, nobody plopped anything inside of me that wasn't plopped in you. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yes. And, yeah. and maybe, you know, some of us um, maybe started sooner or I don't know, you know, for some reason are the experiment. Because yeah. I, I can remember times where I've come pretty close to death my own self. Mm. And I knew. <laughs> in that moment mm -hmm. that um, I wasn't dying. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Anytime soon. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's a scary thing sometimes because, you know, I am, you, you, you have these experiences happen and you, and you skirt death and you think, okay, well, I'm not dying, so I'm supposed right. to be doing some things and these things that I'm doing can be awfully scary, but... You know yeah. you're not alone. Right. Right. That's one of the reasons I'm vegan is because my parents died when I was in my 20s, both of cancer, and my grandma died of cancer, and my aunt died of cancer. So that's one of the reasons that I investigated veganism and how actually it was pretty pivotal to be becoming vegan so that I could live longer and see my kids longer. <laughs> you know, my kids, none of my kids know their grandparents, so... I intended that to be different for my grandkids. So, and Rocky, he's still there, right? Is Rocky there? Yeah, he's here. Does I Rocky so. want to come say hi? Rocky. So Rocky's your oldest, right? He's my oldest. He's 26. He's 26. He, yeah, he was two months early. He only weighed three pounds when he was born, and we both almost died. So, yeah, it's a pretty incredible story. So he's your oldest, and he, wow. Mm -hmm. So he's been the man of the family in some ways. Yeah. Yes, him huh. and his brother, yes. Hey, Rocky. <laughs> hey. Come, d bend Hi. down a little more. We only see your right eye. <laughs> How you doing, Rocky? Good. So you're the oldest, huh, of this clan? Yeah. He's uh -huh. coming. He's going to sit. Okay, come sit and visit with us. Okay, move closer to your mom. You know, so you can you see go. Your... Oh, you look a lot like your mom. That's what don't... everybody says, but I don't see that. He does, too. Oh, really? Yeah. So Rocky, you've um, you've watched your mom, and you've been certainly a big part of your siblings' lives, huh? What's the what's a big lesson you've learned? I'm sorry for putting you on the spot, but I'm known for that. Learned about what? Talk a little louder, can you? Learned about what? About, about anything about life, about your outlook on life. What's your like because of how you've been brought up and what you've observed. I mean, you were, you, you have a young mom, you know, what, do you have like a, a thing about life that you've noticed or that you know? Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Okay, I'll tell you what. So you think about it mm -hmm. and you're going to, you're going to give me, maybe you'll give me that answer in the book. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or before the show is over, think about, okay. you know, having been in this family. And are you the brother that your sister came to? No, that's okay. Nico. That's Nico. Yeah. yeah. So think about what it's been like being brought up by a young mother and going through as much as you all have gone through and noticing and, like, who are you? You know, how have you been brought up and and who you've become and I'll. If you get up, if you get that answer before the end of the show, let me know, okay? If you don't, you can let me know in the book, and then everybody out there is going to have to get this book because you're going to have to hear what he had to say, 
Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Good. So Tish. Yes. So you you became a, a into cooking vegan, yes. basically because of you know your parents and that they you know they died of cancer. So like, what kind of stuff do you cook? Oh uh, well, anything can be veganized, but. I mean, so I grew up on the standard American diet, I should tell you that. I grew up in North Carolina. I grew up eating fat back and all kinds of animal products and even um, a fair amount of processed food because, I mean, my mom was a great cook, so she did teach me a lot, but we did eat our share of processed food. But um, I, I make everything. Everything that we grew up eating is just even better now and, and fresh and you know, feeds your body and feeds your soul, and um, you just feel good about, you know, taking good care of yourself, taking good care of the planet, not harming animals. So, yeah. so when you so it, with cooking um, that way, do you cook? Does your food have a meat flavor, or does it have a vegetable flavor? Well, th that's an interesting question. It's it is very flavorful. Um, I think that anything that you cook, if you have a balance of saltiness, sweetness, bitter, savory, there's six of them. I can't right, name them all. Right, right. And that, um, that you will have a very satisfied palate if you can achieve that. So, no, I don't look to replace a meat taste. And the funny thing is, once you're vegan and you've been vegan for a while, I think your taste buds actually retrain themselves. And so you don't, like, I don't miss meat. In fact, there's this new burger out, uh, Beyond Burger or something like that, that's meant to really replicate replicate um, an actual beef burger. It bleeds like blood or whatever, but it's not blood, it's beet juice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is I don't crave that. It's not my kind of thing. I think that you kind of lose that once you've been vegan for a while. You don't even want it anymore. But I think it's a great product for people who don't know anything about veganism, who want to try something and say, okay, let me see. You know, for regular meat eaters, omnivores, it's a great product to get them introduced to, hey, I can have what they consider to be great tasting food and not actually harm animals or themselves right. or the planet. So I have been a vegan yeah, before something a what <laughs> Michaela wants to say yeah, something. yeah come um, about the meaty flavor um that meaty flavor I think she can replicate it perfectly Wait, say that again you said say that again you what the the meaty flavor that you lose when you don't have meat can easily be replicated by my mom like um <laughs> thanks just in anything like any animal product she can make mac and cheese and all that stuff and you really you don't miss it because that meaty flavor is actually found in nature, in mushrooms. Um, the taste that you like, that satisfying flavor from meat is called umami, which is the same flavor as a mushroom. Uh, it's a non-essential fatty acid that is, or amino <laughs> She's acid. She's not my it's kid or anything. <laughs> oh my God, you're her kid, I think. No. <laughs> it's, 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 a flavor found in meat that's also found in mushrooms and that's the the best most pure way to get that satisfying flavor anyway which yeah. i think we were supposed to be eating the mushrooms all along i think <laughs> we just got mixed up and started eating meat instead of mushrooms <laughs> you know because it's because i have been vegan before uh -huh. and i do not like the taste of really it. Or, yeah i don't like seem to like the taste ah. of meat in my in my veggies yeah right I, yeah i i just don't like it yeah you know i'm not the one that goes for <laughs> vegan chicken i don't like it mm -mm. You know? i don't eat no i love it i love vegan chicken i think you it do? tastes just like yeah. chicken and yeah i'm about it because i yeah. i love umami yeah some okay. people like it some people don't i recently had chicken of the wood which is the mushroom she's talking about which um I don't, I don't know where it grows. I know they have it in Boone. It's not the only mushroom. No, it's not the only mushroom, but it's the one that you hear people talk about this chicken of the wood thing, which is something tastes, that's supposed to like taste chicken. like chicken and, and has the texture of chicken. And I did have that recently in Boone, North Carolina, when I was at yoga teacher training. Um, 
It's it's okay, but like you said, Marilyn, I'm good with just a plate of veggies, you know, maybe some quinoa, some brown rice. I don't really look to replace that. Yeah, no, I, I think there's other flavors, like you said, you know, if you do the, the, the sweet, the, right. you know, the salty, the bitter, you know. Now, Chris has a question. Sure. So hold on, let's let me read this. So she okay. said she read in your bio on your website that you have autoimmune disease. Yes. Aside from eating gluten free and vegan, have you made have you made any additional modifications in your diet, yeah. such as avoiding dairy or soy? Well, when you're vegan, you, you automatically so yeah. You don't eat dairy. dairy. Right. Yeah. Um, I do not avoid soy. Um, I do eat soy. There's a lot of conflicting information about soy out there. I'm sure you're aware. And I've done my own research and come to the conclusion for myself that I'm okay with soy. Um, Dr. Greger, Michael Greger, have you heard of him? No. Oh, man, I highly recommend that you check out his website. He's an MD. His website is nutritionfacts.org. And he posts videos on YouTube and on his website of all fact-based, scientific, study-based information about all kinds of stuff from artificial sweeteners to soy to mushrooms to all kinds of, I mean, just really, really informational. So I would highly recommend that you would check out what he says because that's basically where I made my determination on whether or not I'm going to eat soy. I do eat soy. I don't eat it several times a week, I'd say, but I mean, because I like I like more vegetables than I do tofu or whatever, and I don't really do the fake milks too much, so I don't do a lot of soy milk, but I don't avoid it is what I'm saying. Okay. I'm vegan and I'm gluten-free, and I think those are the only dietary changes that, that I've done. Um, I'm not on any medication for my autoimmune stuff. I've had blood work done, and I, have, um, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, so... My thyroid doesn't work properly, or supposedly it doesn't work properly, but I've had blood work done, and it's it's getting better rather than getting worse. So I must be doing something right, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's great. And your mm -hmm. body, I mean, are you do you um um well, you've been doing this a long time. So if you, would you still be diagnosed with it if you took the test? Um, I don't know. Uh -huh. I was. I don't know. I was diagnosed with it, hmm, I don't even know, four or five, maybe even okay. six years ago. So I haven't been checked to see if it's um, if it's still showing up. Who knows? Maybe it's completely gone by now. I don't know. But I've never taken any prescription for it. Um, yeah, I don't take any, any medications, Nothing. actually. So what um, is a typical breakfast? Uh, <laughs> for me or for my family? Well, <laughs> They're all vegan, right? The three that live here are vegan, yes. Okay. So what? The two that don't live here are omnivores. Mm -hmm. are, are, okay. Yeah, yeah so, but the three that live here are vegan. And so, I mean, me, I, I pretty much, if I'm hungry, then I might eat some raw fruit and some raw nuts for breakfast. And then, and then I don't really eat a lot until, well, maybe mid-afternoon. Dinner, I eat a good... A good portion but the kids um we eat oatmeal i make this great breakfast casserole that has steel cut oats and fresh fruit and vegan milk in it it's really good what do we call that michaela breakfast cake or something breakfast cake yeah i uh, make smoothies and i have a vitamix so we make smoothies with fresh fruit and fresh greens and um granola granola i make granola actually i have some granola oh, you do yeah I make homemade turn granola. It yeah, turn it yeah. around. Can you see it? I know it's hard to see. But it's got, um, it's gluten-free and vegan. It's got oats and raisins and cranberries and pecans and almonds and pumpkin seeds and chia seeds and vegan butter and vegan turbinado sugar and vanilla and all kinds of good stuff. So they eat that sometimes, and I also sell that. Um, Do you not get hungry? Um eating vegan do you get hungry during the day well of course i get hungry i eat when i'm hungry but i don't think i get any hungrier than anyone else in mm -hmm. fact i'd say i i mean i'm 43 so i think your metabolism starts yeah. to slow down you kind of kind of have to be careful what you eat the, the, the scale might mm -hmm. surprise you the next morning but um i guess you hear the stereotype that vegans don't get enough to eat or they're not satisfied or 
they're hungry all the time or they're too skinny, which I can disprove all of those for you because if I don't watch what I eat, I will quickly put the weight on. That's for sure. Uh -huh. um, my kids eat a lot, but they're growing. So, you right. know, the, the two teenagers are, they eat a lot. Michaela's actually making oatmeal right now. <laughs> I can smell it. <laughs> well, I'm gluten free, so. Hey, good you for know. you. Yeah, and I don't, um, I might occasionally have dairy, but very little. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good for you. And I would like to be vegan, but I, well, I like I'll meat. But... Let me help you with that. Yeah, go ahead, help me. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Every meal that you sit down to, if you can make one positive choice for yourself, for your health, for the planet, for the animals, you're making an impact. And I'm telling you, before you know it, Marilyn, I'd, I'd love to talk to you more about it because it's it seems like it's a really monumental, huge change. But a year from now, if you were to go vegan today, a year from now, you would look back and think, why did I think that was going to be so hard? It's, it's really, really, really easy once you get used to it but you have to cook all of your meals don't you well I mean I do cook a lot and I enjoy cooking but no we eat out I mean there's places to I mean I just got back from Aruba I ate vegan the whole time I was there vegan and gluten-free the whole time I was there I went to the Dominican this year I ate vegan and gluten-free the whole time I was there um yeah Are you gonna so write a book <laughs> I don't know I don't know what it would be about <laughs> I think recipes would be a good start oh, and yeah, I mean yeah. you know I do that eventually mm -hmm. yeah I think that would be a great idea Tish yeah I would like to do that yeah I mean because sure. you, you have I'm sure you you make up a lot right yes that's yes that's one of the things I kind of need to get my head wrapped around because I'll just throw a bunch of stuff in a pot and the kids are like oh this is great what'd you do I don't really know <laughs> yeah I think that's a lot about what what happens with with yeah. veganism is that you make up a lot of your own you know, whatever's around. Yeah, there are a lot of great resources, though. There's a ton of great cookbooks. There's a ton of great websites. Um, I can point you to any of that, Marilyn, yeah. anytime you want. I'm yeah. happy to do that. Yeah. yeah. So what, let me ask you something. I'm seeing a lot of coconut sugar. Okay. What is that? Um, it's a sugar that comes from coconuts. And it's, I mean, it's, you know, every now and then a new phase comes about. And so there are people out there who think it's healthier, your body still processes sugar, the, the way it processes sugar, whether it's from corn syrup or turbinado or coconut sugar. And have you seen the documentary called Fed Up? Yeah. Oh, okay, great, good. There's I sure did. Yeah, so basically, you know, sugar is sugar. Okay. You know, it's, I don't eat processed sugar as much as I can, and my family doesn't, but it's still, it's still sugar. So coconut sugar is still sugar. It's still sugar, mm -hmm. yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I also don't eat very much sugar. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, occasionally I'm going to sneak something or have mm -hmm. something. But, I and you really have to look. Yeah, I mean, it's an thing. It, yeah. Oh, my God. Well, and the thing is, if you, if you, if you, Grocery shop, obviously, like they say, on the outside of the grocery, you know, around the perimeter, not down the center. Chances right. are, but there's, it's interesting what you can pick up that, uh, mm -hmm. oh, like, well, you don't eat meat. So, but I'll right. go buy, like, Whole Foods, like, mm -hmm. go get, like, turkey. And mm -hmm. you can't buy turkey that's not, ha doesn't have sugar in it. Wow. That's or, pretty crazy. Or fish. Or you know, I like fish. Wow. and. Like smoked fish has a lot of smoked fish has ter a salt, a sugar in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, you yeah. know, but I do like vegetarian, and I just it's such a hassle. I think. I mean, I don't know if I'm if I with what you do. I I would need you to move in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you live in Raleigh, right? Yeah. I can definitely help you out. I promise you, it is not anywhere near as difficult as you think. I do. Anyway. I have a client right now who is. She was raised in um, South Dakota or North Dakota or something, you know, beef country. And she was never taught how to cook, even omnivore diet, she wasn't taught how to cook. So everything she's ever fixed for her family has been out of a box, you know. And she's just recently become a client of mine because she's had health issues, uh, diabetes, high blood pressure. And so she's had to make some drastic changes. And she's now plant-based. And 
I'm telling you, you just you just need the right information, and it's right. totally totally doable. And I, the only thing you'll regret about going vegan is not having done it sooner. Uh -huh. Honestly, and I was a six. What'd she say? What she said I was six when I was vegan. She said if a six-year-old can do it, you can do it. No, I don't. Oh, I don't know, honey. You're a pretty strong woman there. <laughs> so what? What's your dream? In general. Oh man, I've dreams. You mean? In general. Um. I don't know if you could call it a dream, but it's definitely in my heart to make as much of a positive influence on this world as I can. So just to share love and to encourage people to believe in themselves and to make as much positive influence as I can, you know, I want to, I want to love all people, no matter your race, religion, you know, I want to, I want to save animals. I want to save the planet. Yeah. Well, you are doing a really good job. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and and, and job-wise, I mean, so you're doing the chefing, right? Yes. Are you yes. also working in some restaurants too? Nope. No. Just, nope. Just, just personal chefing and catering. Yes. And okay. I teach yoga. And I also um, consult restaurants who want to incorporate vegan items into their menu and help them identify ways that they can do that. So are you, so how successful is that? I mean, how is that going? Which part? The, you know, Educate. consulting. Yeah. But there's a huge need for it. Oh, I, I mean, would say. How, how I really became aware of that was when I was in the Dominican, um, which is a Hispanic culture. And you would think that they would have like tons of rice and beans, but the place that we were staying was very, very driven to accommodate the standard American diet, the, I guess the way Europeans eat, it was so much meat and dairy products and very little even fruits and vegetables. And so that's when I was like, oh, I see, they could, they could really use some help. So I want to do that. I want to go back to those countries and, and help them on a large scale. But even there's need for it right here in our own community for, for people who just don't know that there are lots of options available that don't include harming animals and harming the planet. And, so when you go into a restaurant to eat out, mm -hmm. what do you tell them? Um, well, it depends on where you go. Like, there's a couple places in town here that we know as vegans have something that we can eat, and we pretty much order almost the same thing every time we go there. But if you go somewhere you don't know, kind of the first question, where you look at the menu and see if there is anything that's vegan or close to being vegan that you can easily modify, and you ask whoever your server is, um, do, you, do you have vegan items? And so you find, first kind of got to get a feel for whether or not they even understand what veganism is. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just really educate, educating people and helping them become more aware. It's, it's not hard. It's really accessible and easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, and a lot of times you have to go to a pretty good restaurant so people can understand you. It can't, you know, it's hard to go to fast food, but even then. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't eat fast yeah. food. The closest thing we eat to fast food is Chipotle. <laughs> yeah. We eat Chipotle and that's easy because you just get a, a bowl with rice and beans and just not lots of veggies and salsa and guacamole. And they even have tofu there called sofritos, but right. that's the closest thing we eat to fast food. Uh -huh. I don't think really, yeah. I don't think we eat fast food. I, right. I can't, I probably haven't been to McDonald's in at least 15 years. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't either. So uh, here's another question. Does, do you have mm -hmm. a degree in nutrition? No, I do not. I have a, a degree in life. Yeah, really. <laughs> what you know, what really? life is for me. I don't have, I'd like to maybe go back to school at some point. And, it, you know, I've looked into nutrition programs specifically related to veganism. And they are few and far between. But I think there's definitely opportunity for that to change. It's not something I can do right now, obviously, because I'm I'm the one paying the bills. So I can't I can't go to school and work full time right now. But maybe one day. Yeah, you will be. I, <laughs> I have faith in you. Thank you. <laughs> so Thank I, you. I haven't said this in a long time because I've been so involved in having my own conversation. So please feel free if you you know you want to call in, ask Tish a question, oh. make a comment. Nine one nine five one eight nine seven seven three. 
or you can chat with us on Skype. You can come in at computers, that's plural, the number 2K voice, or in our um, chat. You can, you know, put your name, nickname, whatever you like, and ask questions in there or comment. You know, we'd love to have you join in the conversation. You know, I love these stories. I love a Tish story. I love how strong we are. I love how capable we are, creative, and left to our own devices. There is nothing that we can't do. And I have, you know, I have faith and hope for any... For anyone and anything is pretty much possible as far as I'm concerned. And I really believe that Tish is a poster child for that reality. Thank so, you. yeah, I'm really so happy that you, you know, consented and, you know, to come on because I think it's just amazing what you're doing. Thank Not think I know. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So, um, you want to get a little personal. Are you dating? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wow. I know. Um, I'm, I come out of left field because I hear yeah. it and I go, boom, just comes right out of me. I would have never guessed you were going to ask me that. Uh, me either. There was, yeah. There is someone really, really special in my life. Yeah. Good. And I hope this, I'm sure this person is uh, worthy of you. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great guy. He's, a great he's not guy. vegan yet. He's not, huh? Not yet. Uh -huh. Keep yet. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Good. Well, you 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 earned being with somebody wonderful. Thank you. You're I welcome. Appreciate. You're welcome. So, what is your so like, so vegan? What's a good like lunch? You know, when you're on the go. You know, I think a lot of people who are busy on a regular basis find uh -huh. it difficult, like myself. To mm -hmm. prepare like foods ahead of time, and mm -hmm. so what's a good lunch on the go? Well, I think the easiest thing to do for people who are working a full time job is to make whatever your dinner is going to be, and then make enough that you have something to take the next day to heat up. Not only is that uh, better for your body, but it's much more economical than eating out every day. So when I was working before I quit my job, that's what I did: is I would just cook enough for the family to have dinner, and then I would take some leftovers to work every day. So that could be anything from um, a really hearty, delicious soup to I, the kids really love mac and cheese, so I make mac and cheese for them, which is not with a bunch of fake cheese, but rather all vegetables. But you'd never know. i got to make it for you, Marilyn. You will love it. Um, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to make it for you. Yeah, but, I mean, we... we uh, Michaela's really great at making sushi, so she makes sushi sometimes and takes that. Um, there's a really great vegan community here called Wilmington Vegan, so we have potlucks once a month, and um, there's a lot of, there's I think it's over like 1,300 members or something here in our community now, so there's a lot of fellowship and um, sharing of recipes and all kinds of fun stuff. I just catered a birthday party, actually, the other day for 30 people and it was all vegan, all vegan food. And there were lots of people there who were not vegan. They could not believe well, what they said. I don't, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but they were like, this is so great. You might so, yeah. toot, 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 toot. <laughs> you gotta toot, I mean, because what, okay, so I'm a big believer in tooting. Okay. Because if you toot, then I know it's even, it's delicious, you know what I mean? So you gotta toot. Tooting is a good thing. The more we toot, the more people will toot. <laughs> And the happier the world will be. Right. Right? Okay. Yes. Yes. So, Toot, what'd you make? Oh, I made um, nine different recipes. I made homemade crackers, raw crackers that were made in the dehydrator. It took like 15 hours, but I made two different kinds, and they were really good. One was flax seeds and pumpkin seeds and chia seeds and lots of different spices, oregano, garlic, and I made another one that was Italian tomato crackers, and they were really good, and I made homemade wok and a couple of homemade dips, and I made two different kinds of hummus, and I made um, pesto, cashew cheese, stuffed mushrooms, and um, all kinds of stuff, <laughs> yeah. What do you I use for cheese? What do you use in macaroni and cheese? Like, what kind of, what do you use to create the cheese? Uh, my my recipe for that is on my website, so okay. it's not top secret. It's mostly vegetables, so you just put in a pot 
some potatoes, onions, carrots, garlic. You cook them until they're tender and you reserve that liquid and then I put that in the Vitamix with some veggie broth and um, Dijon mustard, nutritional yeast. Uh, it gets like a quarter cup of vegan cream cheese, cashews, raw cashews, more garlic, paprika, cayenne, um, all kinds of yumminess. And you would never know that it's not cheese. It's, it's, it's really good. <laughs> that must take you all day to make. No, it doesn't take that long. It doesn't? Long. It's not that bad, no. <laughs> you, can, you can make a 9 by 13 casserole, and I'd say probably an hour and 15 minutes, maybe. Do you maybe use an Instant Pot? Oh, I have two of them. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm in love with the... I, uh, yeah, I, I have two. Two. Yeah, I, got some, I got some new stickers for my... I got a big one and a little one. Yeah, I use them a lot. So do you lot. have recipes on your website for Instant Pot, too? Not yet. I okay. haven't yet. Yeah. There's a great Facebook group called... I know, uh, I'm, I'm in there. No, there's one specifically for vegan recipes. Oh, there is? Yeah, it's called Instapot Vegan Recipes or something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. They have, they have lots of great recipes in there. Yeah, I love my Instapot. So ha wait, I want to ask you quickly, because sure. oh, we're almost out of time. So when you go to the grocery store, when you're beginning your vegan journey, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. isn't over... So, because it can be overwhelming, Yes. right? Is there... I mean, do you have something on your website that tells you how to start with that? I don't, but that's a great. That's a great idea. Would you do yeah. that and let me know when it's done? I will. I sure <laughs> will. Yeah, and I'll and I'll send you some too, just so you have it until I do get it on the website. Yeah. But there are a lot of good resources um, for people who are just starting out in veganism, like a pantry list, and you know what I mean. Yeah, it's, something to start yeah. with. Yeah, because it, yeah. it it's expensive. No, it's not. Oh, it's not. No, it's cheaper oh. to be vegan. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> way oh. cheaper. Way cheaper. Yeah. Really. Yes. Especially if you don't, if you don't try to. Well, I think when people go vegan, sometimes they're looking to replace everything they've been eating. So if you look to replace a bunch of meat products with these fake vegan meat products, then that is expensive. Processed food can be expensive, but a holistic diet like okay. what we eat of whole foods rather than processed foods is much more economical. Okay. Much more. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, tell everybody where, what your website is. It's lotusandlentils.com. Yep. Lotus like the flower for yoga. Lentils like the food that we eat. Lotusandlentils.com. Perfect. And, and <laughs> if they go there, if they go there and they want to connect with you personally, they can do that. Yes, they definitely can. I have a couple of different forms. For, it depends on what you're looking to do. You know, if you want meals for your family or if you're looking to cater an event or if you just want to email me, you can do that too. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect, perfect. And just before we, we, I have one more question, but before we go, sure. Amnon, could you, I just, I just want to share one again about my book that's on Amazon. It's called In Just One Afternoon, Listening into the Hearts of Men. And I interviewed 20 some odd men about their life journey, their secrets, their uh, passions, and just how they've done things. So that's on Amazon, both in a paperback, softback, and ebook. So if you have any questions about it, please let me know. If you have a story, any kind of good story that the world needs to hear, and we need to hear a lot of stories, that's Marilyn, M-A-R-I-L-Y-N, at Marilyn Shannon. Dot com, please email me and let me know because it this is how we connect, right? This is how we know who we are and just, you know, that we're really more alike than we're not. So, Tish, a yes. quick question. Uh, Chris wants to know, what, is there a particular tool that you use in the kitchen besides the Instapot that is your go-to tool that you love passionately? I can't choose just one, but really okay. quickly, I would highly recommend an Instapot, a Vitamix, a good food processor, and a good garlic press, because I use a lot of garlic and couldn't get by without my garlic press. <laughs> Perfect. Well, yes. we are almost out of time. See, wasn't that fun, Tish? That was fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. You're my pleasure. I think you need to have your own show. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think Thank you would do you so great on, uh, like, take us in your kitchen and cook yeah. and, yeah, I think um, Rocky can set you up to have, like, a little yeah, studio in your kitchen with yeah. lights. And We've you talked can, about it. 
we'll talk again. If you want to know more, let me know. Okay, I will. Thank yeah, you. yeah. I think Amnon would love that, wouldn't you? He's shaking his head. You can yeah. do a you can do a show right from your kitchen. I uh, yeah, with Rocky's help probably. Oh, yes. I know. With with that, of course, we're not letting Rocky go. Rocky's got to be part of the production team. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so anyway, I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Thank my, you so much. Thank you. It was mine, and I can't wait to talk to all your children. Okay, <laughs> and I want to make you mac and cheese. Yes, yes, yes. Gluten-free, though. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's what I'm Okay, making. all right, wonderful. All right, everybody, thanks for being here, and see we'll you see you soon. Bye. Bye. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.